Get ready to immerse yourself in your favorite music like never before and experience a new level of sound quality and clarity that will blow you away from such a small speaker. Join me for my review of the all new Aero 100 from Sonos. Hey, this is Brian from Worldwide Stereo coming to you from our headquarters in Montgomeryville, PA to talk about the latest Sonos speaker release, the Aero 100. If you've watched our YouTube channel, you know I'm kind of the go-to guy when it comes to Sonos. I'm always excited to get my hands on their new releases. I've always been a gadget and music guy, so Sonos has always scratched that itch for me. If you're new to our YouTube channel, we have an entire playlist of videos devoted to Sonos and we'll link it in the description box below. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe to stay up to date on our latest releases. So how did we get here to this new era of Sonos speakers? Sonos was founded in 2002 with a mission to help music lovers play any song anywhere in their homes. They had a long way to go before the technology even existed to make that dream a reality. Their first release, the ZP100, one of the first streaming amplifiers which came out in 2005. Sonos didn't release an all-in-one speaker until the Play 5 in 2009. The Play 5 led to the Play 3 in 2011, and then the Play 1 in 2013. Today, Sonos's rate of innovation and speed to market has drastically increased with a slew of new releases over the past few years. Sonos has a speaker for just about any room. I attribute this to Sonos's commitment to their three principles. Setup has to be fast and intuitive for anyone, it has to integrate well with any technology or service, and it has to deliver superior sound in any home environment. I think that is a fantastic approach to technology and streaming music. The original Play One was my favorite gift to give for a long period of time. I gave one to my sister, my brother, my mother, you get it. I personally owned about five Play Ones at one point. I love those little speakers. Sonos replaced the Play One with the One in 2017, but there wasn't much of an audio upgrade when the One came out. It's pretty much the same body, but they added voice control. But other than that, it delivered the same audio experience. For me, I didn't need voice control, so I never upgraded. Fast forward to 2023 with the release of the Aero 100. Almost 10 years after the Play One's debut and Sonos is finally delivering audio upgrades to the smaller form factor speaker. And now I'm tempted with the Aero 100's improved audio, enhanced true play tuning, and the Sonos voice control option. Sonos voice is built to control music. When you ask for an esoteric lo-fi band from Southern California, there's a better likelihood that the Sonos voice platform will know what you're talking about rather than Alexa, whom is searching almost any iteration of that word. Keeping the music first allows them to be more accurate at playing what you want to hear and more specifically, what you asked to hear. Sonos is dedicated to a simple unboxing experience and eco-friendly packaging. The Aero 100's packaging is made of entirely recycled materials. Sonos has also started to incorporate this philosophy into the materials that they use to build their speakers. The Aero 100 is constructed with the most recyclable and eco-friendly materials to date. Sonos has even updated the power cord wrapper to a recycled material so there's no plastics involved at all. Sonos wants the speaker to be unboxed and ready to go as fast as possible. And with a single strip to pull on, the box opens and you have access to everything very quickly. Inside the box is the Aero 100. Power cord and simple instructions for setup, and that's it, nothing superfluous. The setup of the Aero 100 is exactly like any Sonos device. Setup for the Aero 100 is a breeze. Once you have the Sonos app on your phone and you're connected to your network, Sonos will walk you through the process. There are three ways to connect to your new speaker. A Neofuel chip method will ask you to place your phone near the speaker for it to authorize the Air 100 to access your Wi-Fi information from your phone. A chirp method sends out a high frequency sound from the speaker to your phone. Lastly, there's a pin code on the bottom of the unit that you'll have to type in. Sonos wants to reduce your time to music, so setup is seamless and quick. Once the speaker is ready to be set up, a prompt in the Sonos app will appear asking if you want to add a new speaker. Follow the on-screen instructions and you're ready to go. The whole process took four minutes to add both speakers and combine them into a stereo pair. After they're added into your system, Sotos offers a run-through of how your new speaker works called Get to Know Your Aero 100. A simple walkthrough to get you familiar with the button placement and new features. The Sonos Aero 100 comes in black or white matte finish and weighs a little under five pounds. 
at around seven inches high, almost five inches wide, and five inches deep, it's taller than the one in the Play One by almost an inch and comes in at about a pound heavier. The difference in the body is that it's not as much of a rounded off square as it is more oblong as you can see here. Sonos is releasing stands and wall brackets designed specifically for the Aero 100. The Aero 100 stands will conveniently hide the power cord, will look seamless, and will be just the right height. With the Aero 100, there are three distinct ways to control the volume directly on the unit itself. A new swipeable volume control. The speed that you swipe will adjust the ramping speed of the volume. If you go slowly, it will go slowly. If you swipe quickly, like this, it will go down faster. You can tap to raise or lower the volume, and you can press and hold to ramp the volume. You'll find updated playback controls on the top of the speakers as well. A standard play pause button in the middle here, and they added a dedicated button to skip forward and skip backwards. These functions were available on their previous speakers, but you had to remember to swipe left or right or double or triple press the play button. There's a button on the top here to turn the microphone on or off. It will have a white light if it's on. And there's also a kill switch down here on the back that will make sure the microphone is never on. Green means it's good to go. You'll need this turned on to run their new quick true play feature, but you can disable it once you're finished. A quick reminder, if it is never on, you will not be able to enjoy Sonos's voice control or Amazon Alexa. An interesting piece I found during setup was when I engaged the Sonos voice control. During the process, I got a warning that I had to engage the microphone on the left speaker because it was the one chosen by the Sonos app to be the dedicated speaker to listen for voice commands. Funny thing is the right one had the microphone engaged, but it wouldn't let me proceed until I fixed the switch on the left speaker. The biggest addition to the Aero 100 is that it can add Bluetooth as an input. Bluetooth 5.0 to be exact. It is a concurrent Bluetooth input, just like on the Sonos Roam, where it will stay on your network and be available via Bluetooth, unlike the Sonos Move. The Bluetooth input can be shared to any room in your Sonos ecosystem, so you're not limited to a single player. This makes it easy for friends and family to use their phones to play music through your Sonos system without having to download the app or get on your Wi-Fi. Press and hold the Bluetooth button and it will quickly go into pairing mode and you're set. While testing it, I used Bluetooth in a variety of ways, but my favorite was connecting the Aero 100 to my MacBook to act as much better speakers than the laptop could offer. But Bluetooth isn't the only way to get non-Sonos music into your Sonos system. There is also a USB-C input on the back of the speaker here. Sonos gives you two options of what you can do with the USB-C. They are selling USB attachments that will allow you to connect an eighth inch stereo cable to add in something like a turntable. The other attachment will have an eighth inch stereo input and an ethernet, AKA network connection. Since most people will be connecting to the speaker wirelessly, Sonos didn't want to take up the real estate on the speaker for a network connection. With the Aero 100, Sonos totally shifted the soundscape of their small entry level speaker with this new design. It's not just going to have a 47% faster processor to handle demand needed for voice control, high resolution audio, or using their phase array technology when it's a rear speaker. Sonos has also upgraded the speaker architecture. The Aero 100 has two tweeters instead of one tweeter in the Play One or the One to create better stereo imaging alone, or if you're using them in a stereo pair, it will create a more spacious soundstage. The Aero 100 has a 25% larger midwoofer than its predecessors and is shaped much like the oval midwoofers that you'll find in the Arc, Beam, or Ray. That lets the bass be a lot punchier. It also has a custom waveguide to help create that wider soundstage. There are three Class D digital amplifiers that Sonos tunes to the unique acoustic architecture of the Aero 100. That additional height and larger midwoofer will give you more bass response, but while I played with it, I did add my sub mini to the mix to get that oomph I really wanted. The Aero 100 can be used in three configurations, as a standalone speaker, as a stereo pair, or as rears in a home theater setup. As a standalone speaker, the Air 100 is great in kitchens, offices, bedrooms, or wherever you want to add a little music. As a stereo pair, I think it's a great contender for top two channel systems for under $1,000 for sure, with the help of the Sonos Sub Mini. 
I've always felt that two ones and a sub mini were a great starting point for a 2.1 channel musical setup, but when I set up a pair of Aero 100s with the sub mini, it felt like a more substantial listening experience. The sub mini took over the heavy lifting for the low end and the Air 100 midwoofers could focus on filling out that mid range instead of playing double duty. The dual tweeters made it feel like the vocals were more present and the sound stage was more open. If you add in the Victrola Stream Onyx that has the Works With Sonos designation, you have a well-rounded audio system for a little over $1,500 and you only had to plug in four things. In regards to home theater setup, when paired with an Atmos capable soundbar, Sonos engineered the Aero 100s to utilize the same phase array technology that the Beam Gen 2 has, so you can create a simulated Atmos setup. It's not a true Atmos setup because there aren't dedicated channels to the height speakers, but it will use psychoacoustics to create the feeling of an enhanced audio setup. If you're like me and have the play bar, I warn you that the Aero 100 will not work as rears with that soundbar. If you want a true Atmos setup with Sonos, make sure you watch our video about the Aero 300, where I go into more details about Sonos's first full 7.1.2 Atmos surround system. Check the description for the link. A crucial part in any Sonos speaker setup is running TruePlay, Sonos's room calibration software. The Aero series speakers come with the ability to do a quick tuning of TruePlay that will use the microphones built into the speaker to do a very quick calibration. I'm talking about 30 seconds at most. This is perfect for someone who wants a quick setup and doesn't want to walk around with their phone for five minutes doing the standard TruePlay. Do not set this speaker up without using this feature. It benefits the sound so much, and if you need to hear for yourself, you can. In the app, you can turn it on and off to listen for yourself. But it takes 30 seconds. It took me longer to explain it than to set it up. Slightly longer if there's also a subwoofer. Which leads me to another big innovation with the release of the Aero series speakers is Sonos has finally released TruePlay calibration for Android devices. You've asked for it, and they listened. It won't be the same as if you were using an iOS device because there are still a great number of microphones that Android phones could use, but Sonos wanted to make sure you could tune your system if you were an Android user. The result is the Sonos app will make a couple suggestions on how they'd like to tune the system, and then you can pick which is the one you like the most. I'm glad that Sonos finally found a way to add this feature to the Android ecosystem. I tested the Aero 100s in five different setups. I made an Amazon playlist because that's the only service on Sonos that can stream high resolution audio and spatial audio. The Aero 100 isn't rated to do spatial audio, but the Aero 300 is. I explore that deeper in my review of the Aero 300 that is also linked below. Number one, as a standalone speaker. I see this as the most common use case for the Aero 100. I replaced the Play 1 in my kitchen and put the Aero 100 in its place. The bigger speaker made sound a lot bigger in my little room. The two tweeters made a big difference by using the space a lot more to its advantage, and the bass bump made things shake a little more. I also started to really use the Sonos voice control in my kitchen more than anywhere else because my hands were usually occupied. A perfect speaker for where you want music coverage in your home and you don't have a lot of space to give up. Number two, as a pair of stereo speakers. I would love to see more people set up a pair of Aero 100s because that was the most fun setup that I tested. I set this up at my office desk and played it against a pair of Play 1s, a pair of power speakers with a S2 Sonos Connect, and my Play Bar. Yes, I have all that and more at my desk. The Air 100s showed me that my powered speakers were a little muddy in the mid-range versus how crisp things sounded with the 100s. This setup really allowed me to experience the audio difference between the Play 1 and the Air 100. I say this a lot, but if you do set up a stereo pair, match it with a Sub Mini. In all the setups I tested the Air 100 out in, it was the one I kept going back to to compare it against other systems in my house. The additional investment in a Sub Mini will greatly impress you and improve your experience. A stereo pair would be perfect for a home office, study area, or with a turntable and a dedicated music space. So number three, in a home theater setup as rears with a Beam Gen 2. I borrowed a Beam Gen 2 from our showroom so I could test out the Air 100s as rear speakers. 
The Beam Gen 2 and the Air 100s created an Atmos-like surround system. Together, they created a more spacious sound environment. It's not just acting as a direct surround speaker, the Air 100 is creating a sound reminiscent of having multiple speakers by using its two tweeters and their phase array technology to make it seem like they're placed differently. It was a far more enveloping sound environment than using ones as rears because you get a real sense that there's height to your rear channels. This is perfect for surround systems for TVs up to about 50 inches. So number four, as laptop speakers. When I wanted to take a break from listening to music and wanted to watch another YouTube video, I used the Air 100's ability to use Bluetooth as an input. I was using my MacBook Pro and easily added the Air 100's as speakers and boom, I was ready to go. I even swapped my MacBook for my iPad when I wanted to run a video in the background while continuing to prepare for this review. The Air 100's are exceptionally versatile. This was perfect for my office or any desk space that has multiple screens when you need content overload. Number five, as TV speakers. This is the out of the box configuration that I tried out. Since Sonos added the option for a Bluetooth input, I felt I might as well test it with my TV and I was pleasantly surprised. The stereo pair sounds quite good and can offer an alternative to a soundbar if you're more limited on space. I can see the Air 100s on their stands and a TV in the middle, a very minimalistic and clean install. However, you do lose the special features associated with the sound bars like speech enhancement and nighttime mode. I considered it a great test of the Air 100s capabilities and a clever use case. I actually really enjoyed it. We get asked a lot in our videos with speakers, how does it sound? Well, that is hard to play for you in a video. However, if you're familiar with the Sonos lineup, I can make some direct comparisons for what the differences were like for me. I ran true play tuning on every setup, so every speaker was on equal playing field. First, does it sound better than the Play 1? Yes. I found the Air 100 to have a better bass response and a wider sound stage. Second, does it sound better than my Play 3? Yes, but by a little. The Air 100s have a distinct separation between high frequency and mid-range, which I felt increased the clarity while maintaining enough separation for the low end. It's really an impressive speaker for its size. I even tested it against my play bar. I found the Air 100s to have a much better bass response and were musically more dynamic. For the best replay possible with the Air 100, Sonos does suggest placing them with eight inches of clearance. Don't crowd them, they want room to breathe. I really appreciate the new look and sound of the Air 100. I'm glad that Sonos finally upgraded the audio for their smallest speaker. Where would I use this? I plan on moving my Play 1 to its new home, and I'll be putting an Air 100 in my kitchen and dining room space to make use of the auto true play feature and get Sonos voice control. I'd also like to add these as a stereo pair at my programming desk, because yes, I have two desks in my office. I have different setups based on tasks. I can't help it. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to go with a full Atmos setup in my living room, and I haven't decided between the Arc and the Beam Gen 2. If I go with a Beam Gen 2, I'll use the Air 100s as my rears. And if I get the okay to upgrade at home to the Arc, I'll go with the Aero 300s so I can do a true Atmos setup. If you're thinking about doing this, check out our other video where I'll, I'll spend some more time explaining why. With so much going on with this release, we've added a Q&A section to our blog on the Aero speakers with our most asked questions. The link is in our description box below. Thank you for joining me for our review of the latest Sonos speaker release, the Aero 100. You can learn more about this online at worldwidesereo.com, or if you're in the area, you can stop by our showrooms in Ardmore or Montgomeryville, PA to test them out for yourself. We offer 60 day returns, free shipping on all orders, and we're authorized dealers for everything we sell. If you have any feedback or questions, leave them in the comment section below, or you can call or email us at any time. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. This is Brian from Worldwide Stereo. Thanks for tuning in.